Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Just over two weeks before the US elections, Hillary Clinton is trying to push home her advantage in the polls. Whilst Donald Trump's team insists the race is not over yet, our Washington correspondent Kylie Morris is outside the White House. Should we believe what the polls are saying, Kylie? Well, Donald Trump certainly, John, is a disbeliever. He's uh, consistent with his attacks on the electoral system generally. He's come out today saying that the polls are phony, that it's all being rigged by the Democrats. But when you speak to pollsters here in this place, they say, look, there is a consistent trend emerging and it favours Hillary Clinton. On average, she's leading by about six points in the polls. There are some outlying polls that put her lead as far as 12 points ahead. There's another that has she and Trump evenly pegged. But uh, the view is generally that it is looking good for Hillary Clinton. Now, Donald Trump, when he's talking about the polls, he turns out to these mega rallies. I think we've got some picture of one yesterday in Florida. He's visiting Florida, I think, four times in four different places today uh, in order to try and nail down what is a very important state for him. But uh, he says, look, look at these huge numbers of people who are coming out to see me. That is evidence that we are going to win. But I've spoken to at, one, at least one DC pollster who's told me why that mantra does not hold true. Because what having these uh, big rallies or anything like that tells you is that you have a small core of very enthusiastic people who are willing to come out. And that helped Donald Trump in the primary. It's certainly still true now. But those people are a small fraction of the people who are actually now, going to vote. Early already open in a number of states. In, indeed, as many as five million voters have already cast their vote. In North Carolina, the figures stuck up around sort of 47 percent for the Democrats, 28 percent for the Republicans. So it's being played out, at least in early voting, that those, tr those polls feel pretty solid. Um, however, given all of that, there are real doubts about uh, predictions. This is an unpredictable election. And certainly projection, projections are merely that, projections. The thing that has swung this election more than anything else are the behaviours, the words, the comments of both of these candidates. And that is what will drive who moves into this place next year. Kylie, on a beautiful watching day, thank you very much indeed. And as the clock ticks down to election day, a huge ground war is in full swing. Both the Clinton and Trump campaigns working round the clock to win support. And this time, the parties know more about who's voting than ever before, building enormous data banks with details on every single one of America's 225 million voters. That ranges from which brands they buy at the supermarket, what they spend on credit cards, and even what they watch on TV. It's all being used to bombard voters with tailored messages. Michael Crick has been to the key battleground state of Pennsylvania to find out all about it. It's the battle of big data campaigns hoovering up masses of personal detail on 200 million voters. Do you really have a file on every voter in this country? Yeah. And, yes. And, and if you just pick one at random, how, how much would it say about an individual? Literally, you could look and there would be you could look into thousands of characteristics. A big brother world where your life is captured digitally, then the data analyzed to win your vote. Nowadays, the campaign is right here. The campaign is right at your fingertips. And developments here in America are changing elections in Britain and worldwide. It's a revolution and, and a lot of the old guard are, um, are somewhat terrified by it. Philadelphia in Pennsylvania is where American democracy was born, where Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence and the Founding Fathers signed it in Independence Hall. Thomas Jefferson later said that the Declaration of Independence was intended to be an expression of the American mind. But now, 240 years on, there's a new revolution in American politics. 
Thanks to advances in data analysis and digital communications, it's now becoming possible for political leaders to capture the expressions of all American minds. Being right here, you're in ground zero of, of campaign 2016. Trump campaigner Jack Posobiec tramps the streets in his Philadelphia suburb, a swing part of a swing state. An app on his iPhone is a vital campaign tool. Pins on screen tell him which voters in which houses campaign bosses think might be one to Trump. And at each address, he feeds in live to HQ what people tell him. This will go back to a national database that will say, hey, you know, this person in Pennsylvania thinks this way about Mr. Trump or thinks this way about Mrs. Clinton. So then the national people can direct messages, emails, exactly. direct mail to reflect their concerns. Exactly. Or they could even decide, you know, hey, you know, we've got a lot of people that are on the fence here. Maybe it's time for a rally. His app includes people thought to be sympathetic to the Republicans normally, but who seem unimpressed by Trump. Now this one here, 603. Yes. What have you got down? What have you, what's your list say about them? Swing. Swing. Swing voters. Swing voters. Right. Trying to get a sense of where people stand in the election right now, if, if you don't okay. mind answering. I don't know where I'm standing. Okay. In both. Um, I think they're both criminals. But one thing about Trump, Trump is Trump. But the thing I didn't like about her is it, she's more sec secretive. She seems to be veering towards Trump, and the details she's given could later clinch it. Yeah, I mean, she looks like she's going your way. It, but and you've got you've learned a lot about guess, her. So what do you do with all that information? So all that information. That's actually as we were talking, I was just flipping through the different tabs in the app and dropping in everything I could find: Christian, uh, special needs, health, social needs child, child care. Careless, reckless, crooked putting her interests ahead of national security. Don't let Hillary Clinton do it again. What Trump's people hear and say on the doorstep is then pushed through the airwaves. And an English firm, Cambridge Analytica, was paid $5 million in September alone to analyze the data for Trump and help refine his messages. And you know this about every American voter? That's correct, yes. Alexander Nick showed me how his firm puts people into groups by psychological characteristics. So these dots here are the individuals in the state of Iowa that, that fit, in, fit these characteristics? Absolutely. In fact, we can even drill down to an individually resolved level where we can, we can identify, remove the name, but where you've got the name, age, gender, and you know, somewhere close to four or 5,000 data points on that individual's. So where does the house-by-house house data come from? An amazing range of sources, among them supermarket and credit card transactions, magazine subscriptions, and what people watch on TV. Between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m., that's usually the time that we're out knocking on doors. In South Philadelphia, a Democrat stronghold, Jihad Silufa is out for Hillary Clinton. He's not part of her official campaign, but a trade union group working America. His iPad has a treasure map not of swing voters, but people thought to be Democrats, but who may need some encouragement. It may be that they, they uh, missed an election where they didn't vote, or it may be that they are um, folks that uh, would support the candidate that we are supporting, Hillary Clinton, if they just you know, got, got a knock on the door and had a little bit more information. So, uh, which one are you going to? So going Both to sides in this contest now think, thanks indeed right to the here. data, that contacting voters face to face is more effective than by phone. When you think about this upcoming election, what do you think the most important issue is? Well, uh, as far as being a working class person myself, it's taxes. Okay. Uh, the most important issue would have to be employment and jobs. Okay. He logs those concerns, but also gets crucial contact details, so the campaign can keep in touch right up to polling day. And you can just enter your, your cell number there. Because we are not as divided as our politics suggest. Data analysis was pioneered in the two triumphant Obama campaigns, which employed lots of clever mathematicians. 
They even boasted they knew the names of all 69 million people who voted for Obama. One of the brains behind it all was Jim Messina. We had 12 people on our data team in 2008. We had 165 in 2012. Wow. We ended up using all that data to change the way we dealt with voters. Because in the old days, people were treated like numbers, and I wanted to treat them like individual people and what we knew about them. Yeah. Now I almost think of it as, as circular. Where Mitch Stewart was yeah. Obama's director sort of, of battleground states. Right so I would be in the Chicago office, and I had reports every single night that went all the way down to the volunteer level in every single state. Um, and so I could see exactly how many doors were knocked by volunteer, how many conversations they had, what were the results of those conversations, and then that rolled all the way up to a national report. Well, big wheels roll. One example from 2012, the weekend before polling day, worrying data from part of the vital swing state of Ohio made them change an Obama concert with world famous stars. I got 99 pounds, but men ain't one. And so we changed the venue of where Bruce Springsteen and Jay-Z were going to talk to the public to an area in Ohio that we knew we were struggling a little bit. This is real data from uh, the presidential Republican primary. But the Republican side say they've now caught up on big data, especially through their psychological profiling. So depending on what personality type you have, we can take messaging on a particular policy or issue and then tweak it. For example, on gun control or the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms, there's one message for people scared of burglary. And that's the, uh, the picture and the message that you would put on their Facebook page or somewhere like that? Exactly that. But for what they call closed, agreeable types, the message is rather different. The same issue, gun rights. This is about the father that teaches his son to shoot. But doesn't that illustrate the basic dishonesty of it all? You're you're hiding this message from that person. You're hiding this message from that person. Look, the, the policy of the candidate in this example is, I am supporting the Second Amendment. I am pro-guns. Now, what that means to you as an individual is different for everyone in the, in the United States in this case. A world of leaders more in tune with what citizens think or a world of politicians desperate for office, micro-targeting people and manipulating them. Take your pick. In Europe, tough privacy laws make some of this kind of data work illegal. And yet many of these techniques pioneered in America were quietly used in last year's general election in Britain and this year's EU referendum. Michael Crick. Well, in a moment, I'll be talking to Carter Page, Donald Trump's former foreign policy advisor, about the state of the race and what the candidates have been saying about foreign affairs. But there's one world leader who has dominated the entire US presidential campaign, and that is the Russian President Vladimir Putin. During their third and final debate last week, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump accused each other of being Putin's Secretary puppet. Secretary Clinton, Mr. Trump, welcome. Look, Putin, well, wait, wait, wait. from everything I see, has no respect for this person. Well, that's because he'd rather have a puppet as president of no the United puppet, States. No puppet. And it's pretty clear. You're the puppet. It's pretty clear you won't admit no, that the, the Russians have engaged in cyber attacks against the United States of America. Well, Carter Page is with me now. Um, was your first piece of advice before you ceased to be one of his foreign policy advisors uh, to say love Putin? I never said that, and I, I think it's a complete mischaracterization, as you heard in the debate, that it's uh, something which is portrayed as being the uh, position, but it On has the other hand, he has with. said, in some cases, nicer things about Mr. Putin than some of the women he's come across. Well, listen, I, I think, you know, the reality is we talk about the word respect, and this is a... It's essential to have a mutually respectful relationship in order to improve the terrible geostrategic position that Europe and the surrounding regions are uh, currently experiencing, given the uh, current challenges with... But you um, don't sense that Trump lies awake at night thinking foreign policy? Listen, I think that, you know, what I, what I do sense is that Mrs. Clinton lays uh, awake at night and is thinking about ways to distract attention away from a lot of the foreign policy mistakes that she's made, not only over the course of the last 
couple of decades, but even going back into the 1990s, there is, again, on the question of respect, a deep animosity which runs you know, exceptionally uh, deep between, these, uh, between the Clinton family and the Russian leadership. And you know, a lot has been said. You know, people are very outspoken in the United States as to those neg uh, you know, negative feelings about Russia. But I think in, in Russia, they're much more diplomatic. But in, in terms I mean, you of, know and, Russia and, well. You do business there. And, no. and you watch Putin. Is that why, in fact, he has intervened in this election and has said uh, things which might encourage Trump supporters? To the contrary, I think he's actually being much more, um, he's, he's not, he, he said on numerous occasions that he does not want to in, interfere in the uh, U.S. election. And his, I, his I, mean, hackers I, have. Well, I, that, is, that has never been proven. And I think this is, you know, similar to the accusations about me, these people come up with these uh, really tough accusations, which based on zero evidence and the story sort of runs away with each other. And it's, again, it's a very good distraction away from, you know, what the possibilities are and, you know, where the mistakes have I'm, been made I mean, over the course of the, the last The problem is that, that the points you make about Hillary Clinton are shared by quite a lot of people who have a lot of misgivings about her. But, there's a huge but, they look at Donald Trump and some of his intemperate statements, particularly about other human beings, um, particularly women human beings, and they say, hang on a minute, however bad Mrs. Clinton is, we're not having that chat. Listen, you look at the death and destruction that has been come out of the, the uh, steps that have been taken. I know, you know, you can say words are, you know, actions speak much louder than words. Chris Stevens, you know, the ambassador in, uh, who lost his life in Benghazi, was a, a top class individual and a, a friend of mine, both on a personal level and a professional level. He's someone that would do uh, the most for, for all people. And but, 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 you know, but, to be totally abandoned, I, I think it's, it pales well, I, th I think on one occasion, r rather loosely and perhaps um, inadvisedly, he, he actually used the phrase, we're going to do sex with him. You know, it was one of his throwaway lines. But I mean, nevertheless, it sort of shows a, a Trump view of Putin that um, might not be wise. Listen, I, I have just, I've watched and have been back and forth to Russia going back a quarter of a century, in 1991, in the last days of the Soviet era. And there, there, has been, there is a lot of hope as to what the possibilities are. And unfortunately, um, so many mistakes were made, you know, whether it's in the form well, of... Well, let me ask you a brief final question. Mm -hmm. Will he win? I'm confident he will. It'll be a sort of Brexit vote. <laughs> Thank you very I'll much, Paul. Thank you very much for <laughs> Thank coming you. in.